Hi, hello, my dear friends. Welcome back to the channel. How are you doing today? This is the part three of elbow leakage. All right. So, in the beginning, I will talk about a couple of uh, solutions uh, in order to overcome this elbow leakage. Uh, that is designing a better RF mixer uh, with very good isolation. So, to design this, it will be costly and uh, and in practice uh, it is very difficult to, to uh, eliminate the uh, leakage completely so this is not a good solution okay the second solution is to use a different receiver architecture yeah there are certain architectures available where uh, uh, there is no elbow leakage problem at all but uh, those uh, kind of architectures are also very costly okay so basically in, in this world, we have high cost mobile phones and as well as low cost mobile phones, right? We should be taking care of both of them. So for that reason, um, uh, when I said mobile phones, today we, we are using, uh, what are we using in our uh, mobile phone? We are using uh, 4G uh, data, right? So we are using uh, 4G. So uh, 4G uses uh, OFDM concept. So let's say in OFDM systems, um, let us try to see how the signals are uh, uh, or what strategies are used uh, in the way we transmit the signal or in the way we process the uh, signal at the receiver in order to overcome the effects of uh, um, local oscillator. Okay. So, initially I had considered a single carrier system, uh, you know, with uh, this as the baseband uh, uh, time domain signal uh, whose spectrum is of uh, this, uh, this is an example I had taken where the spectrum is centered around the DC. With up conversion, down conversion and all these uh, operations, we saw that uh, um, at the receiver, we were able to get back the baseband uh, signal, but uh, there was a DC, unwanted DC component present at uh, uh, frequency zero. This we tried to, if we try to eliminate, we will lose the information presented at the DC. That's what we had seen, right? Now let us see how uh, these things are entered in OFDM systems. OFDM system is basically a multi-carrier system. Uh, why this is uh, taken as a multi-carrier? Because to transmit uh, the signal of this much wide, okay, this much wide um, in the wireless channel um, under the presence of uh, multi-path fading and all, the system would experience a severe ISI. So the entire bandwidth is divided into many sub-bands. And each band uh, would represent uh, in terms of uh, subcarrier. So I will not go to the details, more details about it. But uh, right now, try to understand that uh, the entire bandwidth I have represented here, the entire uh, the frequency uh, uh, band is uh, considered uh, in terms of uh, subcarriers, and these subcarriers are orthogonal to each other. Okay. So this is uh, my um, baseband uh, signal in the in the frequency domain. So right now I consider just five subcarriers, uh, and this uh, uh, frequency response uh, will be centered around DC. So till this point, okay, I had considered the TX part. Till this point, uh, all the it was all same as that of the uh, previous uh, um, video, but now there are two blocks which are introduced as part of OFDM. Okay. So the first uh, one is a, a serial to parallel converter and uh, the input is given to um, the IFFT block. So basically at this point, what we gonna do, we are going to do subcarrier mapping. Since we are going to perform IFFT, the input should be a frequency domain, sorry, uh, the input should be a frequency domain signal. So we will do the subcarrier mapping. Okay. So, if you are doing a subcarrier mapping, how, how exactly the samples are mapped to the uh, uh, frequency domain? So let us see that. So I have considered the BPSK system. Okay, Th let's say these are the bits. Let's say uh, we have modulated and processed, and let's say for example, um, at this point we we gonna get uh, it as one minus one, then one minus one minus one. So serial to parallel converter, I I am going to write it here. Okay. So let's say I will represent this as one uh, minus one, uh, one minus one minus one like that. So this is how we gonna we gonna give the input to the IFFT, right? So this entire operation ensures that uh, or whatever the first sample is there, uh, uh, it's like we are actually placing it on the first subcarrier. 
okay uh, so the first sub carrier will be the leftmost sub carrier which is uh, at minus 2 which is uh, uh, le left towards the or the dc frequency whatever the center um, um, center sub carrier we consider uh, that will be mapped to the dc frequency okay that's how we consider uh, uh, while we are mapping uh, while we are mapping the samples uh, to, to the sub carriers all right so uh, continuously all the samples will be will be mapped from uh, minus 2 till 2 so then we will do IFFT operation and then let's say um, after DAC I will get the time domain baseband signal. Let's say the, the, the time domain uh, response of uh, this spectrum would look like this. Okay, would look like this. Now we understood uh, in the OFDM how we are going to map the samples uh, to the uh, sub carriers uh, and uh, and how uh, the spectrum is represented in XP of T and uh, uh, sorry XP of F in the frequency domain and XP of T in the time domain. So then we all do the sub conversion and uh, we are we will be transmitting and in the receiver part we are gonna do the down conversion uh, at this part and at at this point okay we will have the uh, uh, baseband estimated uh, let's say uh, baseband signal um, if you take the frequency response of it by taking the Fourier transform it would look like this okay there is a high frequency component and uh, we are seeing our OFDM uh, baseband signal as well and with the low pass filter uh, we will be eliminating the high frequency component and finally I would get the OFDM baseband signal with all the subcarriers plus the unwanted DC uh, which is located at the center okay now this uh, unwanted DC is actually corrupting uh, uh, the information present at the DC subcarrier all right so what could be our strategy now since we know that uh, you know this is corrupting the DC subcarrier right so this is XP of F. How did I get XP of F? So at this point, I had a time domain signal after ADC and if I, if I perform um, this operation, then after IFFT, I will get uh, the signal XP of F, right? XP of F, if, if I plot it, I would get my spectrum like this. So in this uh, spectrum, I have the information on all these uh, subcarriers. Okay, but uh, now the DC subcarrier is corrupted and that's why the information present on the DC is lost. So the simple strategy is whenever you gonna transmit uh, the signal. Okay, here we had considered the downlink signal, right? Downlink means there is a base station here, and we add the UV. The signal is transmitted from base station to UV. This is the downlink signal. In this case, mm, mm, you know, while transmitting, you don't transmit anything uh, in the uh, in the DC. Okay, so here you consider uh, uh, zero. So I had removed the DC and the red color. So at this point, uh, I don't transmit anything in the DC. So in the DC here, I will make it. I'll I'll make it uh, zero and I will transmit. Okay. Um, in the further processing block, uh, the DC can be removed and uh, the other uh, uh, the information present on the other subcarriers can be taken uh, for processing uh, and uh, getting back our data. Right. This is one simple strategy applied in the downlink. But here I want to mention uh, so, some more aspect that is that is uh, in the low pass filter. Okay, so here if you see the subcarriers are allocated, uh, um, uh, the subcarriers are allocated at the center of the band. Okay, this is uh, uh, f is equal to zero. Now at the end, if you see there is a low pass filter and uh, we need to cater the uh, filter roll off, right? So there are many other subcarriers uh, at this point uh, they are all made zero so what do we do while while we are going to transmit uh, uh, at the end so this could be number of subcarriers could be 5 but uh, actually uh, whatever IFFT we take uh, that would be larger maybe 8 or 16 like that let's say for, for this example then since the data we are, uh, you know, uh, we are placing it on the center subcarriers on either side of the, uh, uh, the on either on e on either side uh, we are having some more subcarriers, but uh, that is all made zero, that is all made null. 
okay there are some more sub carriers here but they are all made null to cater the uh, filter roll off so that's why um, you know when we have only five samples uh, before taking the ia50 uh, we will add uh, null sub carriers at the end and then uh, we going to take uh, the ia50 and then then we are going to transmit it so uh, at this point there are null sub carriers so that will uh, uh, not have any problem and uh, for our further processing uh, the dc sub carrier is also removed and even the null sub carriers at the uh, edge of the band is also removed and uh, sent for further baseband signal processing i hope uh, the things are clear you know how all right in the upcoming video i will talk about uh, the strategy used in the uplink in order to tackle this elbow leakage please stay tuned thank you very much friends